Hey everybody and welcome to Church at Home with Rachel for Friday the 19th of May. So today is our Feel Good Friday. I changed it from Funny Friday to Feel Good Friday because you know what? Sometimes I'm just not funny. I can't guarantee that every Friday I'll be funny. But I, every Friday I figure I can figure out something, something feel good to talk about. Um, so today I'd like to talk to you about those moments in your life, maybe your work life or your out of the house life that bring you unexpected joy. <laughs> Those moments when, you know, you're thinking about doing something or you're participating in something and all of a sudden it occurs to you that you're really actually having a good time. You're really enjoying yourself. Um, for me, um, it considers, and for those of you who are watching, who I'm about to talk about, <laughs> this is a good thing. Um, I go out and I have, I have um, four, one, two, three, four, four different nursing homes that I go to and take services to um, in Wainwright and Vermilion every month. Uh, I go out and we do, either we do a prayer service or we do a communion service. And um, over the years, I've gotten a little bit more relaxed about it. I used to panic. I used to like write sermons and try to get music ready and and over the years, I've gotten a lot more relaxed. Most of them know that, like, well, you all, you all haven't heard me sing. That would be a funny Friday. Um, but I'm not a good singer. And most of the times, I don't have somebody who plays music for me when I go to nursing home services. Um, and I do have a CD player, and I have a limited number of pieces, of tracks of music that don't have anybody singing. So we can sing hymns, hymns too. But for the most part, my folks just sort of say, no, we don't need the music. Um, in one of the nursing homes, one of the places I go to, the folks are so, um, there's, they're, they're just not able to follow along. It's more, they're more aware of my presence than they are aware of what's actually happening. So to try to sing, they have enough trouble trying to hold their service bulletin that I bring with them so they can see what we're doing than to try to hold hymns and things like that. So they just, you know, hang out. But we we go out there, and I now do what my husband calls cuffers. For those of you who don't know, my husband, Rob, is an Anglican priest. He's a chaplain in the military in Canada. And when he doesn't have a sermon or he's a prepared sermon, like written out, because um, we both use a text for our sermon, and before anybody says, hey, 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 if you're a really good preacher, you just you have to memorize your, your, your talk off the top of your head or, you know, memorize your text. Um, I'm going to argue with that about that. Yes, there are some preachers out there who are absolutely phenomenal talking off the top of your head. And the fact is, it may look like they talk off the top of their head, but they have done hours of research and preparation. And many of them, I remember one of those, um, his, his name is Tom Long, who is incredible, the Superman of preaching. And he's a very handsome gentleman as well, um, sort of adds to the Clark Kent thing. Um, he, I remember hearing him uh, talk at a, at a preaching seminar and he talked about the fact that he does have a full script, or he used to anyway, and that when he's at a hotel or he's at a conference or something and he's going to speak or he's going to preach, he goes over and over and over it and then he leaves it on the desk in the hotel room or wherever he's staying and then he goes and he preaches. Um, so for those of you who you know, are going to get grumpy about, you know, she needs a text, that's not a good preacher. If I don't have a text, I ramble. Well, you know that. You hang out with me during the week. Um, and on Gospel on the Go, I always have a full text. It's just the way I work best. Um, so I do have a text. And Rob also does the same. He only preaches, you know, not very often. So he's uh, he's been ordained for 17 years, but he still hasn't preached enough to sort of be able to you need not have a text. So on the odd time when he's caught off guard or needs to preach on the, on the fly, he calls it a cuffer, an off-the-cuff preach sermon. Uh, when I go to nursing homes, I do cuffers. And they go everywhere. Because you see, nursing homes... In the Anglican Church, traditionally, you know, usually in the Anglican tradition or the Episcopal tradition, we don't have dialogue sermons. If the priest asks a question in the middle of their sermon, it's meant to be rhetorical, generally speaking. We don't usually ask for feedback in the middle of our sermons. Um, sometimes I wish we did, but we really don't. And if people did that in my churches, I think I'd probably freeze. Like, I wouldn't know how to handle it. I think, what just happened? Sometimes I'm referring to the fact that sometimes Anglicans are refer referred to as the frozen chosen. We're pretty uptight sometimes. Um, anyway, so when I go to nursing homes, I do uh, I do cuffers. And it's always interesting because at nursing homes, it's always a dialogue sermon. Somebody will say something. Somebody will pipe up with something. And away we go. And wherever I thought I was going, I end up over here. The most amazing part is that the Holy Spirit moves in 
And where I might have been heading here, somebody says something and we take a, you know, we take a U-turn and we take a, a hard right and we tore a hard left and we end up someplace that it was like, you know what? The Holy Spirit is brilliant because that's where we needed to be. That's where this community needed to be today. Um, did this with Ascension yesterday. We're preaching at Ascension yesterday at, at Battle River Lodge and, and we went some really cool places and I hope they thought so too, but I know I did. So back to my thing about finding those things that you enjoy. I'm always nervous about doing nursing home services. I want to do a good job for them, but I don't go all full Episcopalian and Anglican on them. I don't take vestments. I take a stole and I wear my, my not my civvies. I always have a clergy shirt on. It looks like a priest sort of, um, but I put on a stole and we have this miniature little chalice for the wine. It kind of looks like it came from a Barbie doll kit, but it's from a, a travel communion kit for home communions. I use that and we have the bread and everything. It's all laid out. It's all very, very informal. Um, not casual, but informal. And I always, always come away from those services, even though I'm always nervous going in because I want to do my best by them. And there are times when, you know, you're doing this with older people and you realize that Mr. McGillicuddy over there um, is snoring and his teeth just fell out. Or um, Mrs. Smith is over here and and she's having she's having some flatulence problems and nobody cares whether or not they can hear or see these things. I don't know, but nobody cares because they live together. They share meals together. They have their, like they live, you know, their nursing homes. So they, some of them have their own single rooms. Some of them are in are shared rooms, but this is their family. This is their community. They hang out together. They, they make noise and they argue and they laugh and they, they, the best part is one day I walked in to do a nursing home service and there was a young, um, a young man who was doing his internship there as a social worker, um, a very, a very, very nice looking young man. Um, and he was wearing extremely tight pants. <laughs> Let your imagination do the work. And as I walked through, I was heading toward the chapel. Um, this is when I was in Halifax. I was heading toward the chapel um, to set everything up for communion service. And there was a lineup of ladies sitting in wheelchairs and walkers. And I thought, oh, isn't this great? They're getting ready for church. Like they're going to head for the chapel. Nope. They were watching the young intern walk this way and then walk back. They were checking out the view. It just goes to show that it doesn't matter how old you are. The fact is, the fact is that we are people and the desires that we have and the interests we have and our base, you know, who we are as a person, it comes out. And sometimes what's even better is that the older we get, the more it seems to come out, whether that's because we lose our inhibitions or we're just like, we're so old. We're like, who the heck cares? Why am I worried about it? Why am I uptight? So going out to these services, whether it's because a young intern with a pretty nice looking rear end walked by or it's because Mr. McGillicuddy's teeth have fallen out and I'm trying hard not to giggle as I, I read the gospel at the time or say the Eucharistic prayer or simply because these are people that when I say, what would you like to pray for? They actually speak up. Well, we need to pray for so-and-so because his wife just died or we need to pray for my granddaughter or I just had a grand a grandchild born or so-and-so has COVID and they're locked in their room again. We need to pray for them. I mean, they're willing to talk about each other and then ask them if there's anything outside their building they need to pray for. Well, then we get into politics because we got to pray for Ukraine and we got to pray for Russia. We got to pray for idiotic politicians. We, we got to pray for, for, you know, the, 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 the people down the street. And it's, it's absolutely incredible um, how loving and beautiful these people are in their absolute abandon of being old. Sometimes, you know, people are who they are. They don't lose who they are when they get older. They just seem to become more of who they are. Some people through dementia and things like that, they do seem to lose their inhibitions. But it's amazing because even the most, most you, know, you know, buttoned up ladylike people you tell the right joke or you say the right thing or they notice something and you can see the glint in their eye. You can see them getting the joke and it's absolutely phenomenal. So my question to you is where in your work life or where in your volunteering or where are you out of the house? Do you unexpectedly find feel good Fridays? Mine are pretty consistently when I go out to the nursing homes. 
you know, I, I always worry about it and it's, you know, I, oh, I got so much work to do and, and I get out there and I realize it's the best part of my day. So I hope that this weekend you find the best part of your day. And this is a long weekend in Canada. It is Victoria Day weekend named after Queen Victoria when we celebrate her birthday. Um, and we get the, this particular weekend, we get Monday off. Um, so uh, I will be putting up a, a church at home on Monday for those of you who, who want to watch. Um, I'm not, I don't really get long weekends. I work every Sunday, so it's not really a long weekend, is it? Um, but enjoy your weekend. I hope this, this is the weekend we do all the planting in Canada. We all go to the stores and buy our perennials and our annuals and plant them and, and do all this work. So I pray that you will have a blessed long weekend and that, uh, you'll, I'll check you out. You'll check me out and we'll worship together on Sunday for gospel on the go or Monday for church at home with Rachel. God bless everybody. And I have, hope you really do have a feel good Friday.